The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true wine, and my father is the wine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own, unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you, unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit, because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me, will be thrown out like a branch and withered. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A little girl was going to a birthday party, and her mother told her to be a good girl and to remember to thank her hostess when she was leaving. When she arrived home, the mother asked if she had thanked her hostess. The little girl replied, no, because the girl in front of me did, and the lady said, don't mention it. So I did not. So my brothers and sisters, today I want to thank God for the gift of life, the gift of your vocation to the priesthood, and many blessings to me. On this day, on April 28, 1994, I was ordained a priest with three others from my home parish in India. It has been 30 years. In those 30 years as a priest, I spent 16 years in India, and 14 years in the United States. And in those 14 years, I spent three years in Scranton, Pennsylvania. That was my first time in the United States, from 2003 to 2006. Then I went back to India for seven years. I, I never thought I would come back again, you know. I was doing a lot of work, I wanted to continue. Uh, but then in 2013, uh, my bishop asked me if I want to go. Um, so 2013, I came on five-year assignment, and here I am, 11 years, you know. Five years, I was at St. Patrick's Cottage Grove. Then I went to St. Mary's, St. Paul's, Mineral Point, and St. Philomena of Belmont, five years. And last July, I came to St. Denis, St. Peter, uh, not even a year, it's only 10 months, I think. I am, I am a baby now here. <laughs> so, uh, so that's how, you know, 16 there and 14 here. I think I need two more years to be, to be even, you know, 16 there, 16 here. I think I'll be done, no. <laughs> we'll see what God has a plan. So brothers and sisters, I, uh, God blessed me in many ways. And I always consider it a blessing and a privilege to serve in this greatest country in the world. You might have heard about tonsure in the Catholic Church. Have you heard about tonsure in the Catholic Church? Tonsure is the practice of shaving or cutting a part of monk's 
or priest's hair on top of their head as a sign of religious devotion and humility. Have you heard about that? Wow. A lot of people told me after each Mass, they said, Father, we never heard it. You know? I heard it, you know, long back. So, but it was, it was abandoned, banished in 1972 by Pope Paul VI. So it's no more required. You know, we all love our hair, you know. <laughs> we take so much care. Um, but, you know, priests and monks, that's not our priority. Taking care of our hair is not our priority. It shouldn't be. God should be our number one priority and focus. So that is the reason they had a tonsure, you know, shaving off a part of their hair. Uh, so 1972, it's no more. So all young men who want to be priests, you can still take care of your hair, and you can love your hair, okay? So that shouldn't be a hurdle to become a priest. <laughs> so there are priests too who love their hair, I, told, I was told. So, but brothers and sisters, um, I was born with a natural tonsure. That's the point I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, you see? <laughs> so I was born in 1967. When I was born, I had a natural tonsure. And on the day of my baptism, on the eighth day, you know, one of my relatives, uh, they said, you know, that I would be a priest, looking at the tonsure I had. And here I am, 30 years priest, who would believe that? <laughs> But my mom used to remind me all that, you know, on the day of your baptism, someone said that you would be a priest. And, uh, but when I was 10, I became an altar server. And at 13, a bishop from Nellur, Andhra Pradesh, uh, the next state, a mission diocese, came to celebrate Mass in my home parish. After Mass, he called all the altar servers uh, we were 16 then, and asked who all wanted to study for the priesthood. I was one of six servers who raised our hands. So I'm going to ask the servers here, you know, after. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, you know, at least one will raise their hand, we'll see. So the bishop asked us to bring our parents. I got my dad, and the bishop asked if he wanted to send me to seminary to study for priesthood. My dad replied that if he wanted to go and study, he would have no problem. Then the bishop asked me to get a letter from the pastor and come to the boarding seminary. I left home at 13 to study for the priesthood in the next state. I was born in Tamil Nadu. I went to Andhra Pradesh state to study for priesthood as a missionary because there were less vocations. Um, so, it was when I started learning English at 13, too. I went to a private, a public school. Uh, there was no English, but when I went to boarding seminary, they gave us three months intensive coaching on English, Telugu, another language, and then Hindi, three languages in three months, imagine, you know. That was too intense a course. Be India is a continent. There are 18 official languages and 500 dialects. If you go to the next state, they speak different language. 18 languages, not dialects, you know, 500 dialects. So brothers and sisters, I always wanted to be a priest uh, to serve God and his people. While I was in the seminary, one of my brothers wrote to me, you must become a good priest and help the poor people like Mother Teresa. In every letter, he writes about this. Also, a professor told us in the seminary to pray for the people that we are going to serve already. To pray for the people we are going to serve. So I have been praying one Hail Mary since then for the people I am going to serve until I came to St. Denis. Why? Because on my first day here at St. Denis, I said, I am praying one Hail Mary for all of you 
since my seminary days and one lady told me father this is huge parish one hail mary is not enough <laughs> so i am praying three hail marys now not because you are challenging and difficult no <laughs> you are too easy but because the lady told me one is not enough you know so i am a good listener and i obey <laughs> and i am fair i pray the three hail marys to st peter's as well so every day before i go to bed after my rosary three for you and the three for st peter's and no wonder for 30 years i never had a problem in any parish <laughs> on the other hand they all love me i love them they love me you know the reason now prayer <laughs> prayer is the secret for the success in my priesthood for the last 30 years so my brothers and sisters after completing all my studies in india i was ordained on april 28 1994 my mom was there but my dad passed away in 1986 i am the only priest in my family two of my brothers went to seminary uh, but they did not like it my younger sister wanted to be a nun and she did not like it either so i am the only priest in the family in india you know evangelization is integrated with the corporal works of mercy because there is so much poverty evangelization and works of mercy they go hand in hand you know if you love god you know show how do you do how do you love god you need to show in actions brothers and sisters it is not a coincidence that the motto i wanted to live by as a priest is john 15:5 from today's gospel so john 15:5 was there in my invitation to the priesthood i am the vine you are the branches if you remain in me and i in you you will bear much fruit without me you can do nothing the secret to bearing fruits the secret to be successful is to be united with jesus this is from the farewell discourse of jesus to his disciples john 14 15 16 17 chapter 4 jesus farewell discourse to his disciples he spoke to them personally after washing the feet he was telling them uh, what to do and how to live their lives so this is part from them you know jesus wanted his disciples to be connected with him and that is the only way to bear uh, good fruits so brothers and sisters in today's gospel the word remain appears eight times eight times in eight verses the word remain you know are connected or live you know abide in me eight times in eight verses see the importance of this one so now brothers and sisters jesus expects fruits from us not only from priests and bishops from all of us and this is possible if we stayed united with him now what are the fruits that jesus is talking about if we read galatians chapter 5 verse 22 galatians 5 22 saint paul mentions the fruits love peace joy patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control nine fruits are there these are the fruits if we are united with jesus love peace joy kindness patience gentleness faithfulness generosity self control these are the fruits that we will display when we are united with jesus we know very well brothers and sisters the world is at edge today you know no peace especially in the middle east where jesus was born because people are not united with jesus in european countries the european countries are jealous at the united states why because we have lots of values we still bear fruits 
the churches are full not in europe if you are not united with jesus there are no fruits so we need to be grateful we need to continue to be a model a beacon of light to the rest of the world so don't give up we may be yeah we may face challenges we may face difficulties but we have to be a beacon of light to the rest of the world bearing good fruits you know united states is the most generous country generosity is one of the fruits so we need to continue but there are four ways that we can remain connected with jesus and those four ways are one is prayer like i said prayer is talking with god conversation with god you know we know very well communication is so important today if there is no proper communication relationships will be in danger so if we don't communicate with god our relationship with him will be in danger so prayer is essential second one is reading the word of god reading the bible when we pray we talk to god when we read the bible god speaks to us and he reveals his plan for us essential reading the word of god third one is frequent reception of the sacraments today three are going to be baptized they will be born in jesus today divine life will be uh, instilled in them and that divine life from the day of baptism will be sustained by other sacraments frequent reception you know we are called spiritual fathers because we sustain spiritual life we baptize we hear confessions we give communion we bless weddings we anoint the sick we sustain spiritual life so we are spiritual fathers and then the fourth one is eucharist you are all here we are going to receive jesus for our body we eat food but when we receive jesus we become like him that is the difference the food we eat become part of us but when we receive jesus we become part of him and we bear the fruits of love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness generosity and self control jesus expects fruits from all of us brothers and sisters uh, let us bear fruits and make this world a better place a place of peace joy and justice god bless you all amen